kick off then. Let's get going. Evening all. Thanks for joining. You lucky people. Because you're going to learn somewhere tonight. Because <laughs> you've got me. It took me a, a while to get this going again. While it's uh, going. I've enjoyed doing it. I mean tonight there's uh, 265 photos. So you've got quite a bit to get through. Meaning you're all going to learn some of uh, new members as well. We got coming in. There's at least uh, eight new ones. So welcome to you, lot. Uh, if you miss some of on tonight's event, like if you write your stuff down, and uh, I'm too fast for you, then it, this will be on YouTube uh, tomorrow. So just get it on again on YouTube tomorrow. Then you can pause it, write down all the gumpy ones. I know we incorporate uh, <coughs> different see people. You, Rick. Sorry. Can't see you. I'm just looking at the photograph of you sat at your computer. Correct. That was from like you're getting excited again, Colin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bore you. you... Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right, is he? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he's bloody throwing me now. Look, as well as um, photos and write-ups off different people, because uh, this is for you lot as well. Don't forget, I'm here to learn as well. So even if you're a beginner or a seasoned gardener or whatever, and you want to put your little bit on. Just to set up a couple of photos, what you do, where you live and where you come from, <laughs> what you like growing and whatever, then uh, bung it on. I get them to me earlier in the week as you can, because I've got to put these together. I've got to make sure, sure the photos are <clears> the same <throat> size all this crap. Uh, I've got a few for next week, because we've got too many for this week. So, uh, but it's always good. Uh, Last week, because um, someone's mic was left on, we had a couple cavorting in the in the grow room, and we heard every every moan and groan. <laughs> but uh, that's all right for the lot. We still we still don't know who they're, man. In fact, if they could take a, if they took a photo on the knife, we could put it on for next week, couldn't we? <laughs> but uh, I've muted every mugger in the room. Let's. Got that. Right, at the end when I say uh, that's that's it for tonight, hope you've uh, enjoyed it. We always, uh, there's a few of us that hang on for another 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, and we have a chat towards ourselves and a few more Q&As, which we <laughs> can't get in, because some people have to go early, get a bus or more, whatever. So if you, if you want to listen in on the end again, just uh, carry on that way. Just a bit of gossip for the troops. Uh, last week we had 50 looking, we could follow 46. 40, uh, 44 the week before that so it's about 50 a week which is uh, all right for me right photo one that that was from uh, the first photo was from last week we talked there right educating the public this was um <coughs> because i do trial and errors with everything if i don't you know it's, it's, it's ain't what, I, what i've read it's what i've tried myself and, and passed my knowledge on and uh we still get a load of crap on the gardening blogs groups and whatever that's why I do my own blogs and they're on YouTube. And there was one on just a couple of days ago. Can you see my little arrow there? Yeah. I'm lighting that one. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that, I thought that was a, a good title. And I, I don't think it'll get on. But I've had uh, was it nine over 9,000 hits with it. Some people talk shit. I talk compost. Which they do. And I do. But... Uh, that's what I'd like to say on everyone, but I get thrown off at every garden or whatever. But that's what I do, pass on my knowledge. Uh, Lizzie asked a question about growing greens. No, I was here last week, so I saw when, if I'm doing the greens, i.e. Uh, calabrese, whatever it is, spring cabbage, I only want a few plants, so I use a plastic drinking cup and I put five seeds in. If I want four plants. So if I wanted five, five wouldn't come. And you'll see on the left where I've pricked out and on the right I've got my sprouts and my um, greyhound cabbage. So it's transplanting just one seedling per pot and that's what they stay in. I might go in a bigger pot before they get planted out. So this is for your uh, Lizzie. <laughs> but that, that's with uh, all my greens. This is where I start them off. Everything off is drinking cup. Obviously, multi-purpose compost and the nuclear life. Right, my strawberries, if they're 
Not these, these are my strawberries on the plot. These have been in a while, meaning they're established. So them decent frosts we've had, this will not affect these whatsoever. It might seem to the tops of it, but because the roots and the plants are established, they'll be all right. But if I remember that my little basket at the back of the garden, which was strawberries, I took them inside the greenhouse to overwinter. Luckily, because we've had some bloody good frost, which we ain't had for a while. And that has now come back out because I've forecasted decent weather for a while. So that's where it is now again. Ferreting away. Right, there's a, a few plants up the garden. Uh, the little hound, because we've got a little hound now for the, for the gaffer. Keep the peace. There's quite a few plants that are poisonous to dogs. And, and uh, the little one was scratching. And this was one lavender. I had, to, I had to dig it out. Got rid of that. And looking into it, what what else I've got growing, which is uh, poisonous. Daffodil, azalea, delphinium, which is knackered me up, because there's one right at the top of the garden where the dog was. Hydrangea, oleander, I've got them in an all. Rhododendron, sweet pea, bloody loads. Anyway, I've got to sort them out. <coughs> right, greenhouse. Now it's getting a bit brighter on a night, lighter, which is good for us gardeners, because we're itching to get going. If we do get a nice sunny day, and it's over 50, I open the greenhouse fully. Uh, these windows were shut. Um, I'm usually wedged open a couple of inches of summer, but a bit of air, air ventilation, but we still got the winds, so it was just the front door that was open. But uh, if we don't get no wind or very little wind, then the winds will be open again. You've got to have ventilation. Right, this is me here, uh, Peppers, pricking these out. As you can see, there's only five of a uh, sown in that. So these have come out of the propagator. These are me Carolina Reapers. Hottest you can get. These are for Chinois and myself. So I'll get me drinking cups ready. Uh, me multi-purpose compost. Because I'm potting all these on, there's only five in there, I just empty the lot. I ain't gonna get them out individually with a fork. Emptying them all out like this, obviously there's gonna be less root disturbance. This time I've made me a hole <coughs> where the plant's gonna go, and then I'll put a bit of mycorrhizal or fungi under there, Aris. Give them a kick, help them out. Right, these are firmed in upright. Obviously they've gone down a bit, so I then top dress with some more compost. Next thing I'm going to do is water them. That's when the mycorrhizal or fungi becomes active because you've just watered it. But that is the only application they need. Whatever you put mycorrhizal or fungi on, one application per life of the plant. Once it colonizes them roots, excellent. Do you, water, do you water them from the top or the bottom? Top. Uh, with a little sprayer. Uh, last frost which, which we had last week, look how we get some decent uh, weather now. Delphinia plants, these were, Jeff sent me these from uh, Ostend. Oh nice. So I had to bung them in, the only thing with seed, it takes two years to flower. So I only wanted four, well wait, I got bloody much room for anything else, bloody gorgeous mm -hmm. chunker. So I can't really make them out there, but I placed them in vermiculite on top as normal. Right, it's British Gladiola Society. Nigel Coe, who's the secretary of the of this. He can't make it tonight, he's usually perfect, but he got somebody else on. But he's gonna give us a, a few photos next week and a, a little write-up with the people who are interested in doing Gladys. I know there's a couple of people asked us and I thought, well, I might as well get Nigel. He, he knows more than anything, anybody about it. But if you're interested in Gladys, wanna learn, this is on, on Facebook, British Gladiola Society. And uh, luckily last year, because of the lockdown, they did a virtual show every every week that you could show your Gladys on the on their Facebook group. And I've, I've put quite a few in. And it, and it was good to say there was no shows or nothing. But uh, did, that'll did be good. Did you win anything, week. Mick? Sorry? Did you win anything? Yeah. Oh, I got a, a, a second and a third, I mean, which is good. Yeah. But uh, I might find him out later on. But, he, but, but he's going to uh, do us a, a dollop next week, which will be good. Right. There he is. Uh, Nigel Coe. He's give us a... He lives in Derby. 
he gave us a talk. Um, this is our gardening club, Collier Gardening Club. He, he spoke to us. I think he's given us two talks now. But he always brings extra corms down with him for the raffle or whatever. But uh, I thought, sod the raffle, I'll, I'll auction them off, get more money in. But uh, he's a good lad. He knows what he's doing. So we'll job him for next week. Dennis, I hope you're ready. I'll be on in a tick. Yeah, I'm okay, mate. Right, this is, um, there's quite a few. This is what a photo somebody put on the British Gladio Society. This was a <coughs> shop in India. That's the situation they are now. They're picking, bunching up, and ready to go to the shops. Blimey. And uh, these were a few of mine, which I've grown on the allotment. Always in the same beds. This one, I don't know the proper name, but it's like velvet. I love the colour, love the texture. And it's a corker. We're trying to get, just uh, if we did have a show, Collingate going Club, we have a, a class for one Gladio alloy, then a class for two, and then for three. Just in case somebody's only got one more two. Because I'm bloody hard to match up. Well, same as anything, eh? But I love them. That's a good one. Nice little whiten with a, with a pink throat. But he's got the ruffled leaves as well. He's a corker. There's some good ones about. Dennis, you ready, mate? Yeah, I'm ready, yeah. Good I don't man. know how you've actually put these together, but as I can see this is only been there, my yeah, um, it's ten of been there. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see what date that was taken. No. No. Thursday. No. <laughs> this is Dennis, well, by the way. Been, it would Dennis have been from South Wales. <laughs> Good man. Carry on, Dennis. I am. Um, I actually sold my runny beans the first lot on the twentieth of March. Now, yeah. People might think that's very, very early, but the reason I do it. Is so I can keep the strain, and I plant them out um, in the first week of May. Well, people will get frost, but I actually I got covers to cover them for that eventuality. So I, my first crop, uh, basically, to try and keep the stennis strain of, of seed. Yeah. And then obviously I do I do a couple of other rows then, just obviously freaking and you know for whatever um, shows I can do. But um, obviously we haven't had any shows last year, so. Um, to be honest with you, it, it took me through the lockdown, and without the garden, I would have gone. I would have been, yeah, well, correct, doing my head in. To be honest, yep. I think we all would, Dennis. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's a terrible time, but um, I spent every day in the garden last year. So um, got with us, we we could only travel five miles. That was that was our maximum in in the early part of the lockdown. So oh. we were we were really governed by what we could do. This is shit. Yeah. Now well, these, these, are, these are the um Vin Troop strain, these are. Oh right. And uh, I I I I have done quite well with not so much in the big shows, but I, I, I think I got a second in Morgan once. I, I I managed to get a set to go there. Yeah. Um but I can usually get a set for for, for all the local shows. Is this your back but garden, Dennis? It, pardon? Is this your back garden? No, this is this is my actual allotment. Oh, uh, yeah. This is this is a, about half a mile away from my house. This is. But what I did, I had electricity put in about five years ago, and it's made a massive difference because I can obviously propagate better. Yeah. I was carrying onions from the house down to the plot. They were getting damaged in the car, it's and then um, you know, it's it's just real. It's real hard work, but um. <laughs> Where 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 have you tapped your electric from, mate? The local lamppost. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually it's actually in one of the houses next to the plot, but they don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. I I'll give them a few quid for the electricity one year. <laughs> like yeah, they, they was actually. Yeah, this is um, this is a little bit of a joke one. This is my mask in about about March, April last year to um, protect myself from the COVID uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. It works all right for spraying as well, mind. I reckon you I, went I to do, Mars with her. Yeah, I, I do use the... Um, I, I do use the um, the mask every time I spray. Now, this is a collie, which uh, I think it's an actual Tory collie because the name of it is Boris. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> 
And I, I, I do find I, I got it from um, Shelly Seeds, I did. Uh, and I do find it a really nice um, collie to grow. I've ground bodies before, good cropper. Oh, they lovely, they lovely crop they are. But um, I mean, I don't grow, I don't, I don't really grow them for the show. Um, I mean, if I got them ready for the show, I would. Now this, this actual manure heap is outside. It's about sixty yards from my daughter's house, <laughs> and she lives on the farm. She's got horses down there, and uh, I just got access to as much as I want, really. Um, oh, so I get the I get the boy down. We fill the trailer, and then of course I got to empty them when I get back. But um, he he gives me hand to fill it up, and um, I Lord think I can get about twelve barrels on there. No, this is the same tunnel as the onions were in, and of course, what I do when when there's a frost um, around about, well, I, I don't put the onions out till the twenty third of April normally. Um, if there's a frost threat, and I I just cover with fleece and and everything. And um, I've actually got a, a a bamboo framework over the onions, so I can put um, bubble wrap and fleece over them. So um, um, just to protect them overnight, then it's back off in the morning. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's a pain in the in the as you would say in the Aris, uh Mick, but it, you've got to do it because otherwise, um, you know, yeah. they go to seed on him. Oh, good man. I've got underwater underwater piping under the uh, under all the plastic. And I got a supply of water for my daughter's house because she lives, she lives actually. Uh, Three miles away. Uh, she backs <laughs> onto my plot, so it's pretty good. Oh, uh, now the, these leaks, these are um, Pendle leaks. Pendle improved. Um, I had these off um, initially off Dave Medcalf uh, when we were on the NEC together. Yeah, yeah. Um, he didn't give it to me money. He bloody charged me the bugger, but it, oh, it's worth paying if you've got good stuff. And, and it is leaks are good stuff. Yeah, good road, Dave. Obviously, with the lockdown, with the lockdown, I was able to, I was able to give him a fair bit of attention. And um, I think this year was, although I couldn't show him at all because obviously there was no shows. It was probably the best, best I've grown leaks, to be honest. Oh, uh -huh. is and he getting crystal lazy? Did you, uh, did, did you put la uh, lagging on him? Uh, yes, I did. Yes. But I, I tell yeah. you what, I also did. I put the lagging around and I bought some um, PVC angle, inch and a half angle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I cut them off and I, and, and I, I actually attached that to the side as well and a cane in. Yeah. Um, and they did keep fairly straight. You know, the lagging does work, but, you you know, you can't get. I think the, the, the biggest size I was able to get was inch and three quarters. Um, I think you've got to send away. If you're going to go bigger, because they will go... I mean, these were just over three inches around, uh, three inches across. Yeah. They were nine inches around. They were when it, nine. That was in August. I think it was, if I remember rightly from the photos, August the seventh, and they went up to they went up to nearly ten by the end of um, September. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they were a hell of a they were a hell of a size. On, now these on. are all the bin fruit onions. They're actually in in my spare bedroom on the floor. <laughs> I got all powers out to. to um, to uh, finish them off. Um, How'd and, you get away with that? Well, I live on my own, see, Mick. Oh, you jammy son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, it's the most sane thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what size are these onions, Dennis? They, they're all around about the 21 mark. Oh, perfect. Yeah, they were, they were, they were about right for... Um, well, I, I was hoping to get 22. I did get 22 on some. Yeah. But, of course... You know, you get the odd ones go up to 22 and then you can't match them. That's right, yeah. You know, what I find with these, I was very disappointed with them for the fact that they like footballs. Oh. I haven't got a little bit of a high shoulder to go on them. Yeah. And and they just, they, they go out of shape sometimes. Yeah. And um, I've been in touch with um, um, Ivan Meese about it. And what you've, got, what you've got to do right from the beginning, when the onion's growing, you've got to keep that bulb straight. Yeah, all the time, right the way through its growth. Um, because what happens if it if it tilts to the side a bit when it's in when it's growing, it actually builds more on that one side than the other side. Yeah. So you get you get um it's like you know when a shot goes pregnant, you you get that kind of distortion with the with the growth. Yeah. Oh. So it is hard and and um. That's it. You got to keep your eye on them all the time. 
look after them while I'm growing. Have you uh, put any back to seed, Dennis? Yes, I've got them. I got loads of seed. Anybody wants them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I send it up to Mick and, and he can get it to you then. Well, There's 400 right. watching yeah. tonight, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. This this greenhouse now was actually 40 foot long. This was. Bloody Nora. And it was at it was it was the back of the garage is where I got my plot. It was a lean to and um, it was glass on the front and glass all around the top. And uh -huh. this, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago did we have that heavy snow. It's got to be ten years, is it? Yeah, about. I can't remember last week. Uh, we had been. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We didn't get that kind of snow then. Well, I, I went down the greenhouse um, in the morning of the snow as I uh, I actually walked down and I went in the greenhouse, walked in there as if nothing was wrong. And I looked up and there were shards of glass sticking down everywhere that, where the snow had actually, um, the weight of the snow had, had broken all the glass on me. And I was frightened to death, to be oh, honest. I had to get it all out from there. And for a, for a couple of years, I put them... Um, I put a uh, plastic membrane over the top then, like a tunnel. Yeah. And I went, okay, that was great for a while, but uh, that's all gone now. I've, I've actually knocked it all down and I built a wooden greenhouse right at the bottom end, 15 foot, um, which is out of uh, like Alton sized glass, you know, the, uh, the Dutch light size. Oh, yeah. And on the front of it, I knocked it all down and I, and I put a 20 foot greenhouse in there um, last October. But I was very ill over the over the last end of the year, so I haven't glazed it yet. So uh, that's all ready to do now. Now these are, I believe this is the first one, which is uh, um, the cabbages are Sir F1, which has gone off the market now. I used to buy them from Shelley's, and I and I live them. And I, uh, I've actually I got about five or six seeds in it sown um, the day before yesterday from a packet that's. You know, a couple of years old, but I'm just trying them and see if they come, they come. But what? they've gone off the market now. Oh. What variety was that, Dennis? Pardon? What variety? Uh, F cabbage. It's a round cabbage. Sure, F1 is called. But it's gone now. Yeah. Um, are you not sure? Are these mine, it? No, they're mine, Dennis. I thought that. I, I don't recognise them. <laughs> Dennis, good, good on you. Me. Thank you for that. They, they, they're too good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Dennis. Good All man. right, all right, great. <laughs> right, back to my, uh, one of my trials. Yeah, fine. They've been watching yeah. me uh, the last couple of weeks. You know, I've did, yeah. um, one blanche in the clover and uh, one blanche in my own compost. I'm just going to have a purr of the clover. There's the roots on the clover one. And there's the roots on mine. Still thicker, whiter, so better. And the old flags I should just take off straight down to the root plate as well. So right down to the bottom. So I'll scrape all the compost away and get all of that dead leaf off. Can you hear me now, guys? Yep. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Now I'll just uh, put the compost or the growing medium back around the leak and it get going away. Well, we had a nice um, windless cool day. Yeah, I needed these lot to be watered, so uh, they went outside. Water me hey. in the greenhouse, saved me flooding everything out. It's better to throw them outside and water from there. So the blanch leaks go out and my pot leaks. Only six pot leaks this year. Watering away, obviously my little uh, watering can, I use that first. Because the compost is dry, if I use anything bigger, it's just going to run straight off. With this, the smaller the particle of water, it will soak into the compost better. So I bung both of them until the water is coming out of the bottom. I know it's coming out of the bottom. So not just oh well, 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 well be overflowing. The pot leaks are looking good as well. This is uh due in the morning, 14, so everything was open. Doors, windows, the lot. And they say the sun now is getting a bit higher in the sky. This was a foliar feed again during the week. This was with a uh, maxi crop. This is a half a teaspoon per litre and everything got sprayed. Obviously when the sun's off them, it's usually uh, on the evening when the sun's gone in or it's gone below the clouds or whatever. But that, that is our strength to what the normal holy feed, because don't forget we're early on through the growing season. 
but it's just a pick me up for him. But uh, everything gets uh, fairly fed with him. Right, we've got uh, everybody who's it <coughs> watching tonight. I'm going to have a uh, do a draw halfway through. Uh, Ben's going to come up and do a, a proper draw. And then. Uh, and if we draw now properly, as you'll see later, we've got two uh, prizes to dish out. This is the first one, Mammoth P. This came out, uh, I think it's two years ago, from the States. Anything new that comes out for the gardener, I look into it, see who's flogging it and whatever. And then I, if, if they are flogging in the UK, I ring them up. Tell them what I do, and uh, I basically I bump some samples off, and this is one sample. And then tell them I'll promote it on me YouTube or whatever. But this stuff basically is, let's get to me, um, uh, <laughs> right, Mammoth P, it's basically phosphorus. It contains a microbial nutrient that occurs naturally in, in soil bacteria, meaning use this in the bloom group, uh, end of the season, like end of the season for the bloom or finishing off whatever you're growing. So if, if it's onions, then there's a little bit of last meat on whatever. But uh, I've Googled this tonight and that, that bit there, well, that bit, because it's um, concentrate, that's going to last moon. But this is about 26, 28 quid to buy on eBay. That's how good it is. But it's now flogged in the hydroponic shops. This is what the, one of the feeds which the drug is used. Because they only get the best stuff. So somebody will be winning that tonight. And this is uh, somebody else our Ben's done. And uh, somebody get drawn out to win that as well. But it, we'll sort that out later on. Right, whose is this? This is my mate Gavin's. The more mates you've got, the more contacts you've got. I will help anyone till they crap on me, then I don't need them. But uh, if I can help anybody out, and uh, this is um, me mate down South Wales again. But uh, this is his first year with his greenhouse and growing stuff himself. And he's learning, look, 15 tray inserts, plastic drinking cups, he's a good lad. And uh, I'll chuff a bit him. Look at that jerk chicken. Mm -mm. You know I like me grub. Right, this next lot. Colin, this is one of yours. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got an old packet of seed and I thought, uh, um, parsnips, I thought I'd give it a go, um, try and cheat. And you can see, I actually got about 10 germinated there. So I thought, uh, nothing to lose. Um, I'm surprised that I got any because old, old parsnip seed don't normally work. Um, I should be sowing some, uh, another round next week. But I've, 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 on the next photo, I've actually planted them out now. Um, I think I've got, I think I've put ten in. So they've got, there you go. Put, put each one about a foot apart, at nine inches apart. Careful. We, actually, I use tweezers. I don't know if anybody else uses this method. Um, but at least I've germinated, so they've got two chances now. Yeah. Uh, that's that's looking at me plot on the side of the house. That's from the road. The, I'm standing on the road there. Um, in fact, no, it's halfway up. And you can see there that patch there where the blue hoops are. Those are my uh, no dig beds. Can you see the raised beds where I've just put compost? I take the compost as it's generated and just put the raised beds. And this, this bed on the rise here is only two thirds of the way up. I've got to finish that one this year. Oh, uh, dear. Oh. Uh, uh, that area there, that's my um, onion bed. It's 16 foot by nine foot, which is convenient. So each linear foot is a square yard. Uh, I've grown onions in that for 18 years. Um, uh, when I when I <laughs> neighbours saw I was bloody barmy, I dug it out four foot deep when I was a young man. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they thought I was barmy. They thought I was burying somebody. But uh, yeah, and every year I don't know if anybody else does this. I um, I grow my onions on that same plot, 
And after I've harvested them, what I do is I drench, drench the whole plot with Domestus. Um, I don't know if ever, but, but it works for me because I, I never get any white rot or fungal. Uh -huh. uh, and, and so, um, so I'm quite pleased. But I've never bothered to put a cover on it. So I've never actually grown exhibition <laughs> onions, but I do get a nice stock. You know, what, what do you dilute? Good. What right do you dilute the domestic set, Colin? Um, oh dear. I'll come back to you on that. Let me have a look. Just get in my book. Um, I'll, I'll give it a fairly big dose. Uh, where am I? Oh uh, Tell him at the end of the show, Colin, or later on. Uh, yeah, I'll sort it out. I'll look through. I can't, can't put my hand on it now. It's in my book somewhere. Tell us that. Right. Uh, I can't find it now. Have a perb yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's, <coughs> there, there, that's the end of the plot. You can see the road that runs along the front. Um, that, that bed to the right of the path. I um, <laughs> one year I put me um, I put me sprouts there. I had a lovely crop of sprouts, and the buggers kept leaning over the fence, pinching them. So I was a bit annoyed about it. So I reported it to the police. It's a true story. This is. Anyway, they sent they sent somebody round, recorded it. This was in the days when you could get somebody out, and. Uh, she introduced herself and says, hello, I'm PC Gardener. I thought that was taking the mic. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, It sounds a bit but, like the good life. Yeah, but it, it, it turned out we found the culprits were coming out the pub after closing time and pinching them. So we, we had to have a sharp word with them. We tracked them down. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's looking up my plots there, that's the whole length. It, it's about two thirds, probably not quite two thirds uh, of a full size allotment. Uh, little hellebores brightening up the, uh, brightening up a patch. I've just got some more to plant out. Spring's coming. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Good sign for the gardener. Yeah. There's a nice, um, Oh, I forgot what it is. Tell me. Up and under. No. Ah, oh, Camellia. 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 I couldn't remember. Yeah, it's an age thing. Full of bud, look. Full of bud. I've just got to keep my eye on that now for a frost. So if if there's a frost um, record, I'll just put a bit of fleece over it. Can you get it from over the fence, Colin? Sorry? Can it be pulled from other fence? No, no, that's well away from there. So. Oh, sugar, sugar, I was just going to nip to your place. Yeah. Um, that's that's a bench I bought off, uh, that's a bit of a bargain. I bought that off Facebook. You know the Facebook marketplace? Somebody let me have that for 10 quid. Um, it needs probably needs doing up, but I thought, oh, that's quite nice. So I'll sh I will do it up. It's one of my projects, and then I'll. You'll be upset in eBay. I'll stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's the there's a fluctuation in temperatures, six degrees in the night, and then rising to 22, 23. So mm. that's in my future thing. There's 60, 65 litre tub of water in my fuchsias so that I keep under there so so that I don't shock the plants with cold water. Yeah. And keep it at greenhouse temperature. And that's a useful little pipette that you I I when you get to one mil to a litre or something like that for these fungicides, insecticides. Um all your feeds. That, yeah, they are very useful. These markings, it's one mil, two mil, and three mil. Yeah. Um, Damn good, then. They're, they're only pennies. This is me attempt at taking small uh, fuchsia cuttings. Um, there we are, tiny tip cuttings. We're going to see how it... That's a, um, uh, a variety called... Oh, dear. Uh, 
can't remember now. Water nymph. I don't know if anybody's into growing fuchsias. Yeah, me, Colin. Uh, who was that? Steve Chambers. Oh, all right, Steve, yeah. So, Colin, um, while we're on that photo there, I've seen you you've sliced the, some of the leaves off. Is that because they're too large? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, uh, just stop the leaves touching each other and touching the ground. I thought, I mean, I'm only a beginner at this. I'm, I'm still struggling. Um, but I thought I'll give this a go. This is what uh, people tell me. I, th I think it stops the, the, the plants from sweating through the leaf. So you could uh, reduce the area. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's some more of an unknown variety, but it must be nice because I've kept it over the winter. So we'll Mate. try. Yes. Colin, Colin. Hello. if you can get your hands on some test tubes and a test tube holder, you can put your fuchsias, your cuttings, in a test tube of water, change your water every two days, and they'll guarantee that they do actually root. Root, oh. oh in, the, in the test tube, how do you mean? I've, I've, you get a test tube holder. I'll take you a picture for next week. All right, yeah, yeah. I've got and, and, 600 going at the moment. Really? Oh, I'd be interested to see a picture of that. Just uh, rainwater. You've just you want me? Good, man. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you some pictures, mate. Good man, oh. Boston. Um, Colin, when did you take those cuttings? Sorry? When did you take the cuttings? Two weeks um, ago. No, a week, a week ago. Uh, what's oh. today? Today is Sunday. Um, yeah. Monday or Tuesday? Uh-huh. I always take mine in the autumn, just right. before things are dying down. Leave them in the um, greenhouse over winter and pot them up any time now. Right. But I love what, my fuchsias. What, what oh. temperature do you keep your greenhouse, greenhouse at over winter? Um, it depends whether the sun shines or not. Um, I don't have... Well, I've got a heated propagator in there. If it's going to be cold, I turn the propagator on. If it's not forecast frost, there's no heat in there. Right, okay. Mm. Oh. Just a quick in on there, Colin. Yeah. I, I did a similar thing what Steve was on about, only I used the pot. I put cling film on, filled the pot with water, put cling film on, then bodge your holes on and put the cutting through the holes in the cling film. Really? And the, and the root like that, will you? And, and, and it's just in water, no compost? Yeah, yeah, just water. It's a good way, Nigel, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I'll have to try. And, and uh, coming back to the size of the cutting on that method. Um, Probably about an inch. I'll use mine. Yeah. Okay. Between an inch and two. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's the contents of Somebody's the got background music on again. Yeah. Contents of my propagator at the minute. I see, I've got a pot of colliers there. Just, um, uh, I don't know, somebody advised me if they're ready to prick out or shall I grow them on a little bit further. They're in the round red pot. Um, and I think I've got some tomatoes just sprouting. Yeah, they're going to go a bit bigger, aren't they? Have they? Yeah. 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 Got to get hold of the leaf. Yeah. Um, what's that? What's this? Croissants? Uh, croissants, yes, croissants. Taking some cuttings off that white one. Uh, they're colour coded, the tops are white. This one's orange that's just about sprouting. And there's a yellow one up here that you can't see. So I should take five or six cuttings of each. I only want a few just for they just spray croissants on, not just for the mother in law really. Yeah. Um they are I took got a cutting there I take very in fact that's an Irish cutting, yeah, it's actually got roots on, so if I if I mess that up I think I should pack up. Mm -hmm. um, Right, need some advice here. This greenhouse that I've got, the rhino, I, when I assembled it, I didn't put the internal partition in. Um, and I, I just put it to the back of the garage. And now I'm, I'm umming and ahhing about whether to assemble it. I just wanted people's thoughts on partition and whether it that works. Is it a, make it, uh, Colin, uh, is it a rhino or is it a Ryan? 
Yes. Right now. No, it's a, it's a right now. I'm looking at them as well, Colin. Yeah, that, that sound, sound, honestly, I, I, that one of the... Um, I bought it off eBay actually when I come home from the pub one night. I told the story several times. I, yeah, I didn't right. realise I wanted a green hat till I got up the following morning and found I'd won it. <laughs> How much did you pay, Carly, for that? Uh, Four hundred and eighty. Well, I'll tell you, I've got an eight by six, and a right now and yeah. with the staging, it cost me nearly two grand. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there you are. Um, there's, uh, there's a bar across there where the partition would go, four foot from the end. Um, and I, I'm, I, I'm still umming and ahhing whether to uh, assemble it or not. Bearing in mind, I'm a fairly big bloke and the door is only two foot wide. I'm thinking, getting stuck Do you hate in the, the net, greenhouse, you know, Colin? More... Do you hate the greenhouse? Sorry? Not at the moment, but I could, you could do, do what Mick does um, and just blank the back end off and just eat that little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you do, Mick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah just eat the end. Yeah. 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 And then we're going to go through these bits. Here all really nice. oh, okay. This, this stuff here, vinyl, my mate gave this me. Um, he run. Um, uh, garden designs uh, business and that's to get rid of vine weevil but it's been taken off the market now but it was 25 kilogram bag that he'd, he'd never used um, and the, the uh, look at that it's one kilogram uh, one kilogram to one cubic meter which is one to one thousand so that's going to last me see me out that will Boom. Um, yeah. There you go. That's just it. I think that's about Here's it. Here's Colin. That's all we got time for. Thank you, folks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm taking the piece. <laughs> Cheers, oh, Colin. Come on. Oh. Cheers. It was, it was our biggins' birthday during the week, and what he wanted, one thing he asked for, was a full English. So we had this on a on a morning. Nice. So I, I did that for him. Keep him happy. I got no marmalade, so I used some of my own jam. I don't do me talks anymore. If I'm doing a talk and I'm uh, staying over in a B and B, I always nick some of them small marmalade tubs and I bring them on. But mm. I ain't done no talks for a while, so I had to use them. Right, greens. This is uh, on Collins plot, and uh, it says when you want some greens, obviously for composting, just take the outside leaves or dead ends. So that's what I've done here. So this was a. Uh, couple of what well, last weekend there in the middle uh paul gave me some um wood burn ash. Ash. plus some uh amster droppings so i've chopped all my bits up as normal guinea pig guinea pig guinea pig guinea pig throw it in my uh bag these are me little uh, mixtures in here I've got a uh, layers chicken pellets, alfalfa pellets, oyster shells, porridge and eggshells. Them, them are all ground, them are thrown in as well. Spent coffee grounds. There's me uh, droppings going in. Extras, as charred. I was given a tub of that a while back, so that's going to last me young. Plus uh, half a tub of sand. Don't forget uh, worms have got gizzards like chickens. So a bit of sand, a bit of grittiness, they love it. Good dollop in the bag and then mix it up very open everything else up. Then all these extra in natural ingredients are opened up. Double and full into everything. Plus me carbon, which is me shredded paper, egg rolls. And that's what it looks like when it's all mixed. Right, watering once it is in there. It's a liquid osmuk. So go down to me bin. Black plastic still around it, so it absorbs the sun when it is out, keeping the compost nice and warm. Take the lid off, take me two bits of carpet off. Keeping the worms inside the carpets. As you can see, it's still active. That's what I want, my worms. So they're still in there. Add what I've just chopped up, level it. 
shake all them worms out of both carpets into the top of that. These are extra worms. Plus I've got worms in my muck anyway. And then give it a, a good watering. You can see the liquid I smuck inside. If you want to piddle, piddle in there as well. Not you. I then put two carpets back on top and water those carpets as well. And then by the time you come back next week, you've got worms inside there because it's an ideal breeding ground for worms. Put the lid back on, leg it. Six bins, two for leaf mold, four for compost. Les, I ain't got time for leaf mold this week. I'll job you next week, good man. There's the ingredients from my compost, all natural products, meaning they're gonna break down. If you missed that, you'll see it next week. Scott, am you all there? Uh, yeah, I am, Mick, yeah. Good man. Cheers, Scott. You're uh, on. Yeah, these, these are me um, sweet potatoes out of me raised bed. They were the best crop I've ever had. They were fantastic. This was that, last that year? Big, uh, yeah, yeah, this, this, yeah. First year I've had the bed, really. Oh, did you grow them from slips or the blood plants? Uh, uh, slips. Yeah. Yeah. Did you um? Did you grow them in the poly sun or greenhouse? No, no, they're outside in a raised bed. Wow, very good. I know that big one, so I could have wrote small baby. It was. <laughs> uh, this is me grow tent where I got my chilies. And that's me me uh, heated propagator, uh, and they're all starting to come through now. How many varieties do you do, Scott? Normally, I've got. I, I used to do a lot more, but I've sort of reined it in a bit because you get. I went a bit mad with it, and. Um, the wife used to complain. <laughs> Got a freezer mm. full of chilies that we never use. <laughs> but, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so three or four different varieties, and I got sweet peppers in there as well. Uh, you know, the problem with them Jiffy Sevens of the the surround not breaking down. Uh, I usually when I pot them on, I usually put Peace a slit on. in them no. uh, and just and just peel it back a little bit no. before I pot it on. Mm. But uh, usually the roots grow through them. Wow. Oh, and that's <laughs> yeah, that's that's a prickly pear. The wife nice. got off e got it off eBay, and then we started tried to root it because apparently uh, tortoises we've got a tortoise in it. Apparently they eat that, so mm. she bought that off eBay off um, eBay, I think. And so uh, we just followed instructions online about how to root it. So um. dumped it in a load of compost. So fingers crossed for that. Mm. That's a trial. Yeah. And that's me raised bed in the making. So that was like yeah, last year, just just over a year. Well, no, a bit more than that. It's probably nearly two years now. But uh, yeah, man. so uh, mixed style. Good man. So covered in plastic. And I got a bit, we haven't got moles, but I did put chicken wire at the bottom. Yeah. Last uh, few years, that will make now. It, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah I hope so. Well. I hope to, to make a few more on the rest of the plot, you know, but yeah, it's just yeah. time, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. And that's me coffee grounds. Yeah. <laughs> With me worms in. Was this on last week last week or week before? I think it was, yeah. I think you haven't yeah. used it before. But, uh, if you remember yeah. we put this on and it was pure coffee grounds, spent coffee grounds. You got worms yeah. in it. And I'd yeah. had heard it before. I was gonna trial it, but because I, I ain't got bloody time. No. But, uh, I've, I've got a, I've got all me a bit like you, Mick, I've got a, under a cover, I've got different ingredients. I haven't got as many as you, but uh, one of them's coffee grounds. I just get them from a local cafe, and yeah. the fella from work gives me some from his machine as well. And I just keep top, topping it up, bunging it in. And I went in there that week, and there was all them worms. I don't know where they come from. Mm. <laughs> right. Nature, ain't uh, right. great. Yeah, that's it. I have heard of people using coffee grounds as a medium. Have you to grow mushrooms? Did you see that on the telly? No, missed that one. Yeah, huh? yeah I think it's, oh, I've just it. put some mushrooms in today, actually. I don't know whether they're going to grow or not, but I've tried uh, four different um, composts, well, three different composts and one sand, and then I've added some gypsum and chalk uh, to it, because I read somewhere you had gypsum and chalk, but I couldn't find the exact measurement, so I just sprinkled it in, and I've, I've got four tubs, and I'm trying to see what happens. Yeah. What types of mushrooms are they? Sorry? What kind of mushrooms are they? Um, the brown ones, chestnut. Oh, nice. Mm. Uh, yeah, I bought it last year and it's been sitting in the fridge for ages. So I, it says on it best before, so it should be all right still. But um, I've always fancied giving it a go. Mm. So we'll see what happens. I'll let all you know what error. happens. Mm. Scott, thank you for that. 
No problem. Good man. And as Scott mentioned that last week, what do I do? Straight down Tesco. Went to the wenches in there, asked them for their spent coffee grounds. So I got them on, and they were still in the, the back of the van. I still ain't got round to it. So next week, with a bit of luck, I'll get round to that. Right, uh, Nick from Chard. Are you ready, Nick? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Good, good evening, all. Um, oh, Nick. So good evening. Good evening. last week was my first week with Zoom with Mick and the rest of you. So um, afterwards, I just emailed him and said, great, thank you. And he suggested, and I suggested that I'll give you a bit of an update on... Um, where I was in 2008 growing onions uh, and what I'm not not doing now, <laughs> I'm still growing onions, but I thought I'd tell you. So first picture is, uh, this is uh, pricking out. So this is big onions, giant onions. Um, I got interested in them probably about six, seven years ago. So from that seedling to that. Okay. Oh, my word. So, that, that, so <laughs> that is that. I pulled that uh, a bit later on, you'll see the pictures, but I pulled that in the middle of September 2018. Although I've had big onions since in 2019, 2020, last year I grew one to nearly 16 pounds. And what, what, that what, one there what, was... Is that your own seed? Uh, no, it's not, but I've got my own stuff now. Um, is that Glazebrook or something, is it? Sorry? Is that Glazebrook? Uh, no, it, it's... I'm not quite sure whose it is. I think it's. I think it comes from Billy Lamb, which is right. probably through Peter Glazebrook. Yeah. And that weighed in at. Um, I lifted that on September the 16th, I think, and that weighed 18 pounds four ounces, seven ounces under the world record. Well, you take that to Harrogate, did you? But it weighed in at Harrogate. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you put that one up, Mick? You're I never sent you that one. <laughs> uh, okay. So from the start, I thought I'd talk a little bit i'm not sure how people are interested in growing giant vegetables i grow a lot of giant vegetables you can see in the background of my picture i'm just sorting out one of my polytunnels now um but this was this first picture is pricking out the seedlings probably the middle of october um and they were germinated and then potted on into various pots um pricking well, out using have different media lights, do you, you have these under lights yeah i do i grow them in a grow tent um a T5 or something. Sorry? Are the T fives you use? No, I was gonna explain that. So I grow them in a grow tent. Nigel, you're getting excited, are you? Yeah. I grow them in a grow tent. in in a eight in a sixteen by eight greenhouse. Um I've got inlet and outlet ventilation, heating, I use LED lights. That's not one of mine, Mick. But anyway, so yeah, put them into various pots, different media. Um grow them on to various when do you plant the seed? Uh, I plant the seed at the beginning of Oct beginning of October. Here's an example of the sort wow. of root system. Wow. That's a 18 litre pot. That was probably around the middle of January. And that's the sort of roots I'm expecting to see. I don't lift the pots out, I cut the pots away to stop damage to them. Um as you can see I've got a heating not there on the onion, but I, I use heating uh, keep it at about 16 degrees centigrade in the ambient and also soil temperature about the same. I water from the bottom and top, so mm -hmm. uh, I do a little bit of clever stuff. So basically, we all talk about water. We all talk about watering from the bottom, but actually water from the top as well. Because if you let the roots dry out, if you imagine a pot, you've got all your soil and roots. So the, the roots are looking for looking for water but if actually if you water from the top the roots work themselves back up take the water and also use the nutrients in the pot so this picture was um the end of january so they're quite well advanced now uh probably about 16 to 18 leaves on them there's 600 watt led lights which is quite expensive to be honest <laughs> but anyway um is that, is that this year yeah. No, that was 2018, but um, that's exactly the same as what I do every year. And what, what sort of time do you have the lights on for? Uh, okay, to start with, I put them on 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the first six weeks. Oh. Uh, it, it really does shock the plant. Um, and then I continue doing that for about six to seven weeks until the, you see the bulbs at the bottom start to expand. And that's when the plants think to themselves, wow, I've got to, I've got to bulb up. And then you trick the plants to go back to springtime 
and then I follow daylight hours um, in spring from nine hours, but I run an hour or better ahead of spring. Uh, Nick, the... do you, do you, are they hooked up to street lights? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, it, is, it is quite expensive, so I'll give you an idea of the cost of it. So to, to, to run this greenhouse is probably costing me about between 80 and 100 pounds a month in lighting and heating. Um, but Have you got a secret mix to put it on, Nick? Sorry? Have you got a secret mix you put on with? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Not a secret. So to begin with, I use um, it's just a seedling compost from, um, from a seedling, obviously, on germination. <laughs> Then I use um, just seedling compost in a seven centimetre pot. And then I work myself up in strength of compost from um, Johnny Inns, number one with multi-purpose compost, number two, number three, M3. I also put um, some general for, uh, purpose fertilizer in there. I put some other things in there, like some lime, magnesium, uh, a few other bits. Do you use charge? I have used charge. Actually, in 2008, I used charge because it was a sponsor. Mick will tell you. I had a sponsor. Um, I used some... Oh, ch charge, yeah. Yeah, I Big used I charge. I have I, I, I'm not quite sure about charge. I know it's beetle poo. I'm not quite sure um, if it really performs or not. I've used it, but not for the last couple of years. I used a thing called... Um, just trying to think of it. Um, carbon Goad. So in 2008, I used Carbon Goad. I had a sponsor through them. Um, but, yeah... So various different things. I think I think the most important thing when you get to this sort of stage on this is to have enough nutrients in there to last the season. Yeah. Although, um, if you move on to the next picture, Nick. Yeah, just while we're on that one there with a the fan on. Is that fan on permanent? Yeah, that's not that's just not the only air fan. Circulation. Can... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the only fan. I've got some really big fans in there yeah. as well, which you can't see from that picture, which is yeah. about sixteen to eighteen inch fans, a hundred watt fans. Just to let and people they, know, you, you've got to have air movement. Yeah, a lot of air movement. movement. Uh, and you can't see from the picture previous, um, I've got inlet and outlet fans. So I'm bringing cold air into the greenhouse, which sounds a bit stupid, but I'm blowing warm air out, so you've got a constant <coughs> airflow. Uh, this what, picture here was... Hang on, I, hang on, Nick. What were the lights, mate? They were LED lights. Yeah, so they were LED. I've got four LED, 300-watt uh, LEDs, so... That's not 300 watts of that's 300 watts of power each light. So where a lot of people get confused with lighting is about the you see it on eBay, you see it on Amazon all the time about a thousand watt lights. Do not read into it; it's a load of ball. Um, LED lights. It's all about the amount of input power to the amount of output power. So LED technology basically, if you consider like a T5 or a normal fluorescent light. If you use an LED light, the amount of power you put in, you probably double the amount of output you get. Don't worry about the watts. It's all about the lumens. Um, so each of those lights are probably pushing out about 20,000 lumens, which yeah. is quite powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, this, yeah so this is probably around um, middle of May. I should have put a time stamp on them. But they're now approaching. They're quite big. So I've got automatic watering on them with also automatic nutrient feed. So I'm putting MPK into them um, automatically. And people will ask the question, why do you do that? You get a lot of um, acid build up, uh, a lot of acidity in the soil. Well, it doesn't really matter because you're only doing it for one season and then it's spent soil anyway. So I'm also using um, so pest traps, which is natural predators, if you can see them, the little white things. So they're things that uh, send out little predators uh, around the leaves and they eat the aphids, things like a uh, thrip. Not sure where you're located, Nick, but do you ever get an allium leaf miner? Uh, no, nope, never had a problem with it. Oh, okay. No, nope, never had a problem. Um, the other thing I do do, and I'll be honest, I do treat chemicals. So I, I, I'm preventative rather than cure. I do use... Um, chemicals um on a regular basis to on on non-eating vegetables so these vegetables that i'm showing these onions i show you now are not eaten uh they're kept for seed or they're chucked away um but as you can see they're progressing now i would say that's a i think about the middle of june they're now there you go there's a picture of the 
size. What, what what chemicals would you be using, Nick? Uh, right, I use um, four different chemicals. I use a uh, uh, insecticide called Conserve. I use uh, Killer Mite. I use Dynamec, and I use I can't remember the last one. I haven't used it for a while. And also on the chemical side, insecticides, not the best things to use. Definitely, I definitely wouldn't recommend to use them if you're going to be growing for eating. Although, after, so um, that's uh, about 24 and a half inches around. Uh, sorry, not around. Uh, the height of the neck. Next one, Nick. And then you've got just over 30 inches there around the bulb. Um, so 30 inches equates to about, if you've got 25 inches of neck and 30 inches of bow, that equates to about 15, 16 pounds of onion. You can roughly work out what sort of size you've got, depends on the height of the neck. Mm. Um, but the, the one at Harrogate, uh, that that was a 31.4 inch. That, that's the winner of Harrogate before I lifted it a little while. That was 31.4 and around 26 and a half. I think on the neck. How, uh, soon, how soon do you lift them, Nick? Ready for a show? Uh, I leave them until about three days before. Right. So, so I drop the watering right back about three weeks before. If you can tell, you know, with an onion, it, it, the neck will give away. But as you can see on this picture here, I um, this is sort of early September now before Harrogate. I'm forcing the plant, uh, just giving the leaves as much. Uh, light as I can because they're sort of dying back. Uh, yeah, it's expensive, but it sort of you just for, basically you're pushing the plants as much as you can. There's lots of issues you can get; they don't all last. Uh, there's another picture side on, and I'm yes. growing them in air pots as well. I'm not growing Any them in normal rot? pots. Any white rot? No, nothing. No, mm -hmm. not if you treat them and look after the environment. Um, so that's. Um, you can see the air pots with automatic water dosing. The air pots are auto pruning, which means you don't get as you in a normal pot. You know, when you put a pot, a plant in a pot, you get the spiral effect of the roots. Yeah. In these, you don't get that. So this, uh, this is another sponsor from Scotland. Um, I had a lot of pots off them and thank you very much, Scotland. Uh, so it's called air pruning. That was from this year, funny enough. Um, no, no shows this or last year, I should say. No shows last year. That one weighed in at 15 pounds, six ounces. Um, bit of a shame, but so yeah. Nick. And that that's me at Harrogate. Yeah. First place, 2018. That was the first time I entered the show. Bit of a shock to some growers, as Mick will know. <laughs> Peter Glazebrook and um, a few of the others. Uh, yeah, I was, I was well chuffed with that. Um, I sort what? of knew, I knew by... Um, mid-August that I was going to win it because everybody was saying, oh, I've never seen anything like that. So in mm. terms of size, £18.4 when I lifted it, I think there's only other, I think there's only two or three people ever that's grown an £18 onion, so. Yeah. Did you, Nick, what's did you what's, what's the world record at the minute? Uh, £18.11. Oh, right, okay. Oh, You're not well, going off. That was in 2000 and... 16, I think, or 2014. Mm -hmm. um, that's not me. <laughs> and and that's me lifting it, lifting one of the onions in the greenhouse. So you talked earlier about rhino greenhouses. Yeah. These were all grown in a 14 by 8 rhino greenhouse, mm -hmm. although um, it gets really hot in there, so I take all the glass out, the sides. Oh, right. I don't grow with any glass from about um, June onwards. Mm -hmm. um, lots of other tricks of the trade to do. But... Um, yeah, so that's my experience with growing giant onions. I'm growing them. I'm not growing them this year. I decided to have a rest, although I am growing them, but not to the that. So I, I think the key thing, the, the key message is anybody can do it. It's all about time and dedication. It's nothing to do with how. It's all to do with the dedication and how you do it. Anybody can do it. You don't need to be brilliant to do it. The wife hates me. Would you have lifted the onion? <laughs> sure, she does. Would you lift the onion for a shower? Does it start losing size over time? Say that again, Nigel. Would, would, would you have lifted the onion for the show? If you want to put it in, say, Arrogate, then move it, say, a week or so later down to Malvern. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. If you can, um, the problem is with onions, when you get to this size onions, when you get over about 12, 13 pounds, 
there's a lot a lot of water in there so this onion here that i'm showing mm. on this picture has probably got about a gallon of water in it right it's wow. about 80 85 percent moisture so it's really difficult to keep the big ones to keep them over winter seeding yeah. you tend you tend to turn them upside down but um yeah i i, I won harrogate in this year and yeah. i won mulvern two weeks later the same yeah. onion yeah, yeah. Wow. one and other it, thing nick sorry sorry lizzie you carry on Lizzie, carry on. That's me. Oh, sorry. sorry. Nick. Sorry, sorry, Nick. I was just wondering, what sort of taste are they when they get to this sort of size? Can can you still uh, use them? Yeah, you can. But, um, I mean, to be honest, it, the, the, uh, yeah, I do. I've, I, I mean, that year I grew about 12 up to oh, uh, £10 plus. Um, you can eat them. They're quite mild. Um, yeah, they're, see, they're fairly mild. Nick, I want to see hot dog though it goes on. <laughs> Quite a few, I think. <laughs> the larger the onion, the more there is. Cheese onion cup. Can I ask? Can I ask a question regarding um, uh, chemicals again? Um, I've got two in the shed: desis and bumper. Um, one's labelled insecticide, one's fungicide. Yeah. Okay. The bumper. Uh, the bumper is used for rust. Rust. So it, the b bumper is used for rust. I've used it before, but I think bumper, I, th I think rust is more to do with the outside environment and mm. um, temperature rust is and yeah, airborne. Mm. Uh, I, I suffered from rust about five, six years ago. But if you if you've got healthy plants, if you look after them, you won't get rust. Right, and and that's on, only for rust, is it? Yeah, I, I think Mick will confirm that. It is yeah, yeah. Oh, how about desis? What's it called? Desis, D-E-C-I-S. -E don't know it, don't know it's it. It's a good insecticide, yeah. Insecticide. Leek and onion men used to use it. Are you from Harry Good, Nick? Sorry? Uh, no, I live in Chard in Somerset. Wow, hell of a job. How do you yeah, transport, draw, six hours. How do you, how do you transport that onion? Do you put its roots into, into water? No, there, there's a few tricks of the trade. Um, <laughs> to put on weight, I mean, I, I, I'll tell you now, it's um, it probably only a couple of ounces, but you can actually lift the onion the day before and plonk it in a, like a polystyrene ring and hang yeah. the roots in water. It will probably draw up a couple of ounces of water. So yeah. it depends, depends how um, mm -hmm. serious That's you are cool. about it. But but to be fair, in 2008, I, I, I wiped the floor with this one. I Nick, First Nick, time Nick, entering it. Nick, why are you going red? When you were talking about gaining a couple of ounces of water, are you <laughs> trying to insinuate you were cheating? No, not at all. No, it's um, <laughs> no, not at all. You can you can get disqualified. The only thing you can get disqualified for is um, and uniformity and uh, rotting. Really? Yeah. What, Nick? They've got to be in good condition. What, what, one other question, Nick. And only on that side, how would you prepare it for putting it down to seed, and how do you do it? Sorry, the question again. The onion, so the onion to put down for seed. How, how would you put it down for seed and, and how would you do it? Okay, for seed, it's really difficult to keep these. Um, success rate is very Dick, small. Can I put in there, mate? Couple that are... Dick, can, can you cover this on another wick? Yep, because we got a, a bit to get through. I don't want people, but yeah, Nick, any questions, just, just right. send me a message. Yeah, I think Nick's but, on a promise tonight, Nick. We can get this on the. We can cover this. I don't need to run through it and my stuff out. You, you've got to get it done. Uh, very interesting. Enjoyed that. Nick, excellent. Thank you. If well you've done, got it, Nick. flaunt it. You've got it. Cheers, Nick, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're now going to have a break and do the draw for these right. prizes. Well Nick. Done. Yes. Nick. Who's that? What? Brief, briefly, the uh, Domestus, right? It's. 40 mil to 4 litres per square metre. Everybody got that? Who wanted it? No. I think Nigel oh. wanted it, did he? It'll be on YouTube basically tomorrow. Basically 10, 10 mil a litre. 10, 10 mil a litre. Yeah. But I, I yeah. used 4 litres per square metre of, of area. Stop shooting. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I should or not, but it's, it's I've been using it for years. Right, well, just for you to the draw. This is the first one you're going to get. 
Can you all see that? No. Yep. Yes, yes, boss. Yes, yes, man. <clears throat> mammoth. You know what mammoth means, don't you? Big. Mammoth P. P stands for phosphorus. And there's the next one. Go back a bit. It's on a little stand. Hey. Easel. <laughs> an easel. So you can bung that up. Kitchen, bedroom, if you miss your still has you. Uh -huh. So we've got the them two as well. Probe. Now we're going to do this pucker. Costly? Well, Can't I bet I ain't got a bloody clue. Bear with us. Oh, there you go. Oh. Okay, boss. Right, what I'm we're going to do now, uh, everybody who's coming to the night onto the Zoom talk, all your names have been entered onto the wheel, which we'll be coming to. Wheel of Fortune, wheel of fortune. oh dear. You've got it, Cox. There's a drum roll, drum roll. You drum win roll. a giant onion <laughs> from Nick. Right, you'll see all the names around the outside. I'm all in there. There's 560 of us. How oh, many? Really? Oh, no, it's 47. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, there you go. There we go. Here we go. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Oh, you go, go for a piddle or something. Whoever gets the first prize, they can pick whichever one they want. Yes? Oh, give me that worm. Spin the wheel. Come and see the wheel. It's making me dizzy. <laughs> oh, Andrew, that was bloody close. Paul Westwood, I don't believe it. No way! <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'll have the... I'll have the... Did you know I've been at a committee meeting? Jeez. I'll have the mammoth I'll have the mammoth mix. You'll have the mammoth. Mammoth, please. Okay, right. Right, Cheers, boss. down to the draw for the next one. Paul, oh, you're my jammy sword. <laughs> No way, trust me. Nice one, Paul. Thank you very much. Yeah, well done. I've got some big onion seedlings. Oh, so much. Oh. Oh. So much. Oh. 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 It could have been Thank a holiday. They <laughs> <I> couldn't. <laughs> oh. I'll never get another prize uh, donated for next week, which I'm coming on to. I'll cover I'm that. Never winning nothing. Cheers, Ben. Right, we back with us. Everyone be ready for part two? Yes, yeah. boss. Yeah. yeah. I would have never been able to do that on my own. Good job, Ben's at home. Good old Ben. Right, this was uh, three years ago, I think. Went to see uh, this chap from Mock the Week up Raleigh Hill Civic Hall. Oh. And uh, we go with our drinking cuppers. He, ex fireman, Mick Seeley, ex para. He leads me astray. Otherwise, I'll be at home reading the. Whatever. <laughs> this was due before, during the interval, and at then. Obviously, health and safety. The pints I mean plastic tumblers. So during the interval I thought, hmm, I'm gonna try these. So I got the wenches who served all the containers up to save me the half pint and the full pint glasses. Well not glasses, but plastic washes. But uh, as I mentioned some is it last week or week before somebody mentioned um, growing in plastic. Because I have used uh, the clear patch plastic before, which is ideal. Because if it's growing in the greenhouse, you can see when it starts becoming root bound, you know when to pot it on. So th there's no this stuff about you upend it to have a look at the roots to see if it's. But the only thing is, when it did need potting on, it wouldn't let go of the plastic. It was stuck to the bloody plastic. And I, I was near enough squeezing the whole of the plastic just to get it out, meaning I was disturbing mm. the roots that much. So that day worked, that went straight out the window. You said that last week, Nick. Yeah, well, well that, that's what got got me on it. That was using these. Right, this is oh, heaven. I see you, Steve. 
Eh? Oh, yeah. He's gone for a piddle. Oh. This is heaven. You know, you should, what? Those of you who follow me, uh, no. this is where I get my osmug from. Oh, right. And me. And me. On the left, you Mick, yeah. can I interrupt? Yes. Of course you can. You yes, said too. about the um, plastic glasses. Yeah. I view, I've used them because my son's a barman for outside bars so I can get loads. Oh. What I do, What I do is line them with... Um, you know the cheap serviettes, napkins. Yeah. Just lock, just thin those down to one layer. Line them with that. Oh, right. You can still you can still see most of the roots. Yeah. And if you wet them, they slide out easily. Excellent. See. Ah, there Learning all the while. Yeah. Excellent, sir. Because you said Bloody last throwing them away now. Because you said <laughs> last week, mate. I'll, I'll save you, sir. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Right, this uh, this is on a couple of weeks ago. Heaven, this is where the horses am, obviously. It's a stable manure. And uh, we, we heard they were, they were flogging it, and they did flog it off. But uh, the people that took it on, keeping it on, and uh, all that muck on the left, and I'm transferring all that out the road, because that's going to be a car park for the country yeah. area of the people. Yeah. But that's still going to keep the horse muck, obviously. So once it's all done, a couple of weeks, we're still all right for going up there for getting osmos. But I think the one thing will be out the window will be the liquid osmos. Where are they putting all the osmos, Mick? I don't know right yet. At the, right at the back, I think, Mick. Where Could the osmos is. Drop it down to the allotment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thing is, though, Mick, about this. Yeah. How, how do you know who's using antibiotics? They will not for the osses. Not for this. I've asked them. Have you? Yeah. Uh, right, this is back on the plot. This is uh, me drying out some uh, spent tops with my Gavin. Gavin, happy birthday, boy. Okay. This is this is your uh, one of your birthday presents. I've turned it, <coughs> meaning I've unruffled it. So when you take it on, the big bag of it, it's nice and light. Take to everything. Right, this is what I use for all my top, uh, my raised beds, i.e. inside and out. Uh, obviously, eBay is cheaper if you get it by the roll, and it lasts for yonks. What's Only it thing called? Is if you cut it, it frame. Oh, I'm a pro. Yeah. It'll be on tomorrow's. Oh, we'll kiss. <laughs> right, the bed on the right. Because of the winds we've had, this blew this cover off, meaning it was a bit dry. But because it had got the cover on and I've looked after it, just going down three inches and I'm starting getting moisture straight away. <laughs> meaning it is still active. <laughs> so now I've got to peg it down. So I'll get one of my old punches. This is from Wilco. And you can see my tapes from Wilco and all. I still don't get no uh, deals off Buddy Wilco. <laughs> Ten pegs are from Wilco as well. Bloody Nora. So I just bung a hole in. And then that'll keep everything down now. Right, somebody asked us about these wires again. Now I've got to try and sort this out. I don't know whether this will work or not, but this is a, this should be a mucky film. Got quick nose out of making wires. Helping them out as I'm growing. So we've got one there. You've got six inch ones, obviously, but when you click them out, you put them up. So he's always been upright. He's open the plant out. Don't forget, he's only a seedling. Open them out. When he gets uh, root down, I'll put him on the, the top side of the medium. He'll need a longer one. So the first one is six inches, and this one is nine inches. But you've also got the loop on the top. So I'll go back to here and I'll show it out to you. Right, you get your roll of wire. Will go, you used to flog it. Uh, last week you hadn't got one. And then you got small little rolls. I used to have a big roll of it. The big thing you do, I think it's about 20 meters long. But uh, I got to say, there's different coloured wires. So if, 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 if Will go, I got it, then I was not going to get something else. So to get a six inch length, 
You have to cook your wire at 9 inches. Uh, and then for the 9 inch, cut your wire to 12 inch. So he's cooking this morning, then you've got to make a loop on the top end. Get him nice and round, and he's a uh, thick or a tippet. So we start with him. You just hold him one end with your thumb, as soon as you get round to the other end. And that's where you keep it. And then just straighten him up leveling. So I've got two lots. And the nine Once you get over that, I'll then move on to split plane, split two plane. These come from out of foot, put on off two inches. These are onion or leaf or more. But these are good as well. For old in the plant or bright. So that's for when they get potted on, iron off, as you see. <coughs> Once they get potted into the, the next pot size up, we will then have these learning. So that'll be the old in the next size Just a little uh, wooden fire. That's the thing about. Yes, it worked. I don't know whether that worked or not. Yeah. It did. Them clips, you can get them. Um, well, on, on eBay, obviously, I buy them bulk for our trading sheds, but they're good for quite a few things, keeping things upright. You ought to mention Nick when he was talking about his uh, heavy leaks. Keeping them upright, and Dennis keeping the, his onions upright. Just help them out, and you get a decent shape to onion. Right, normal greenhouse after the uh, daylight comes, because there's been a bit of heat inside than outside. But uh, this is where you get your botrytis bacteria, so you've got to have air movement. As I mentioned, um, Nick also with his fans, you've got to have air movement. And he's got a uh, fresh air coming in, as you mentioned, hot air going out. So if there ain't no wind, I open the, the windows slightly as well, just to get a get a circulation. And that's where we are there. And the, the last couple of days, it's it's been like that. If it's doing, uh, even if it's just under fifty, it's still open up as as well. There's always some uh, air going round. And as you can see, back on that last one there. All the windows and uh, all the windows now are nice and clean, not steamed up or nothing. I've dried out. Still kept at the minimum ten, which is fifty. Sorry. That's a warm minimum temperature there. Thirteen is it? Is that in your? That's uh, during the day. It's ten minimum. Now I'm looking at the one on the oh, left. The left one. I probably pressed him. All right. Okay. But well, it, it's 10 minimum more to keep that, yeah. that into the greenhouse. Yeah. But that heat has done me well. Yeah. They're just showing you, keeping them upright, and there's the, the first tr true leaf coming back on. I think that's a, a leak, a branch leak. Well, it's along nice. But you see, it's still got the seed head on, meaning the plant is still taking nourishment out of that seed casing. Once that food has gone out of the casing he will reject it <laughs> that is nature right start kicking their, everything back into life so i'll get all my little chaps and with these i want to nick a bit of um dry medium they don't know compost in them so i'm going to nick some wood chip bung that in and then wait to them give him a good drainage chap's still going so i'm looking after him because we ain't had many people or not so many people down the plot now. The rabbit muck is piling up. And since I've taken this took this photo, which was uh in the last week, we've had another two dollops. Bloody loads on it. We've got one sprout lifting. I've chopped his head off, because that ain't gonna do any anything else. Bloody hell, is that 
you've got a that's a wonderful crop on top of that oh <laughs> look after them you get them a good bro underneath look after them yeah. one kind player plant no swaying chop his head off earlier on but keep some leaves on because he's still taking the, the sunlight through the leaves you just nice. feed people forget to feed through the growing season do you know what variety that is mate yeah i'm not going to tell you <laughs> but what what do you feed them, Mick? Uh, it's it's a mixture, probably liquid or smoke, halfway through the growing season, and then the quite so also. Well, the main thing for me with everything else is they get more foliar feeds than liquid feeds. So okay. when I say feed, I mean foliar feed as well. Yeah. So every two weeks, like maxi crop. Anything the seaweed based. It's seaweed good. based, yeah. So uh, as soon as the sun's gone off them, I, I grow, uh, spray everything in the greenhouse, top of the garden. That's where the sun goes first. Then by the time I get down the plot, I start from the top of the plot where my orchard is, and I do everything in the orchard. And then by the time I get halfway down, it's off the plot completely. So everything is at, is at a foliar feed. Yeah. Mick. Everything. You, you're just giving that plant a bit extra. Mick. Yes. Uh, how do you keep a track of it? You say every two weeks, because I find it difficult. Calendar. <laughs> Calendar. Yeah, I ain't yeah. got time for that. <laughs> well, well you, you, you've you got a memory. The stuff you always read off tonight, straight from your head. My memory. Yeah. That's why I've got bits of paper everywhere. Put yeah. a reminder on your phone, Nick. A hey? reminder on your phone. Put a reminder on your phone. I don't even know how to turn my bloody phone on. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the bottom end of me uh, half plot, and as you can see, the cover's still off the top, and uh, that, that ain't that ain't going on yet in a hurry. Because I've been told we might be getting the frost back again, so I'm hoping I'm wrong, but uh, we'll soon see. But these beds are ticking over nicely. Right back, to uh, back tunnel, back of the garden. I still got nice ventilation under there, and if we do get a summer, the last two good summers we've had, this is still too hot in there. Even with that open and the door open as well, and I have to have a fan in there to give it extra coolant. That's how hot it gets. But this raised bed, uh, my last things to grow in here were gladioli, meaning because I'm that way behind, I still haven't uh, top dressed this raised bed, which I'm all usually done before Christmas. So oh, we're now going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go back on, yes. Go back on that one, yeah. When, when I get to that end there, when I did this tunnel, I did it so I walked down. There's an old beer crate there. Then I'm stood up and I'm working from waist height, meaning yeah. that, that's a, a raised bed, still in the sense. A grand level. But it's a grand level. Yeah. But all that's been taken out, exactly the same as if it was a raised bed. So it's got a good brew in it. you you got to think when you get old. Less work you do, the better. Yeah. So we get in there, and uh, you come and dig me one out, Mick. Go and suck egg. <laughs> that was done bloody moons ago. Wow. Mick, oh, you're missing off this. Mick. Right, all that straw, what was growing? Who's that? It's me. Yeah, go on, Sue. It's, um, I want to go to raised beds because I my back's knackered, yeah. but we've got loads, masses of scotch, um, couch grass. What do you put, well, do you put anything under the raised bed to stop the uh, perennial? When I first took, took my plot on, I had uh, that couch grass and I had mare's tail. And mm. I just went down with a fork, say a, a foot and a half, and I got everything out. After about a couple of months, the maize tail come through. I then got yeah. glyphosate gel, and it, it had, a, had a paintbrush in the lid, and you just yeah. put that on the leaf axles, and you mm. got rid of me maize tail, and I'm I've still clear of it. Now that's got glyphosate in it, but it was banned. The that's stuff it, you can still get glyphosate until that, they ban it altogether. So if you get to Wilco or anywhere, have a look for glyphosate, yeah. but it's got to be systemic. 
meaning it takes it through, it absorbs it, the plant absorbs it, takes it down to the roots. The, the best one I've found, Mick, is called yep. Rouse, it's called Rouse 8 36 or Rouse 8 Green. You can get it off Amazon. Oh. Uh, and you mix it 1 to 40. And, and that, that job's a mare's tail. That's his uh -huh. mare's tail off, yeah. It does yeah. it for about three weeks and all of a sudden it'll just go black and rot. Yeah. Yeah, so get rid of your crap, then put your raised beds on. Thank you. Right, first thing I need to Can you put a link up on that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Good man. Good man. Can you, Mick? What's that? Can you put a link up on what you've just said? The oh. Because I've also got the grass and maize tails. Yeah. Well, right. anything's got glyphosate in, but it's got to be systemic. Read the small print. There's loads on them. If you give me five minutes, I'll put it in the chat comments. You'll be able to see it in there. Thanks, uh, Roger. Right, so this raised bed originally, and when the leeks and onions come out, I've then planted my spare. From those who followed me last year, I grew quite a few gladys in pots. I, I trialled them because I'd run out of room down the my raised beds on the plot. I still got gladys. Yes. Mick? Yes. What are those sides made of, uh, of the raised beds? They look corrugated. They are um, metal corrugated sheeting, just to keep the sides up. And, and, you, then, you... and then I've got angle iron into it, stop the sides collapsing. Right, okay, and the top, and you put something along the top as well? That's just uh, that pink hose. That pink that, stuff, pink yeah. hose, yeah. When I joined the fire service, that was the hose reels off the fire wagon. Oh. Oh, that very good makes sense. Very good, those are. I, I borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, when they're finished with the bloody forest, they wagon. <laughs> Thank but you. But it works. So, if you remember, my gladys were in here, and then once I planted out, I then top dressed with straw. The only one disadvantage with raised beds, they dry out. Whatever you planted, if you then top dress with straw, that keeps the moisture and warmth in. So, I've collected all the straw in because it's on the cover. That straw is not going to break down, so that'll be used again next year. And then add all my bits, give it a good watering, and then cover. There's middle fan you can see at the top, and that is a solar panel on top, which I can't really see from there. But that just gives me a bit of air circulation. And there's I put the door back on, and that's got netting on as well. So we go through it, I'm collecting all the straw. Don't forget this is stable manure. Meaning, I've collected all the straw up. There's bits obviously I'm gonna leave in there. But also on here, uh, I've gone down about three inches and it's moist. That tells you the straw works. It looks after the soil underneath it. And if it is stable manure, the bits of osmoke you've got in is a bonus. So you've got an extra feed as well. Mm. Mark, my extra bags, what I'm going to use to throw in there. Heck. I sort, yes. Uh, I, I've got access because it's not a big lever of mine, but uh, fresh stable manure, you've got the nuggets in there, and yep. it's uh, probably been passed probably a few days, and I get it put out on the roadside up the road. Is yep. that good to put on top, is it? Yes. Okay. Yep, get it. So these I've got bags of uh, manure, leaf mould, my compost, spent hops, and muck, more muck. So I'm just top dressing. Right, this one. Anybody recognise what them are in there? They look like my leeks. <laughs> Bloody Nora. These Bloody were called like cormlets. Yeah, from me gladdies last year. Now, when I emptied me, me tubs of gladiolis, obviously I took the corms out. And this is the compost out of there. So I'm keeping the compost and I'm using that again. I was going to use it as a um, compost ingredient. But I've got to take the little chaps out, the cormets. They are little babbies. But obviously, them, them are the ones I don't need, the ones I have kept. So this is a spent mushroom compost. So I'm breaking the lumps up, meaning it's going to break down quicker. So all that is dished out, leveled out. It's had a good watering, and now I've got to cover it. All my covers are uh, lined up. 
These are all together with Velcro. This is from Wilco as well. To get that involved. I use that for quite a few things. So that's dished out. Ingredients for raised beds. You can absorb that if you need it later on. Right, this one here is Jim uh, from Morecambe. Jim, am you here or not? Jim? No, yeah. Or if he is, I'll talk him through it. This is another new grower, and he, he's into raised beds as well. Good lad. He's, a, he's only a young one, but he, he's getting the bug, which is good for, uh, as you can see, quite a few are following no. him as well. Sorry? No. Do what? No. <clears throat> so he, he's working away, and as I mentioned before, the hardest thing with raised beds, you, you got to fill them with a good brew. Mm -hmm. And he was looking around. I see it's nice and flat. It's just them bloody trees at the end. I don't know where the sun comes up and goes down, but when they are in leaf, they're going to stop a bit of light if it goes behind them. But it, it was originally, he was going to get some council compost, like uh, um, I think it was last week or the week before. And uh, I mentioned that our recycled compost was crap. So then he looked into it and then he looked at theirs, and theirs was crap as well. He thought, I'm bloody putting that in. So his main thing was uh, spent mushroom compost. So he went on eBay and he got a good dollar. And this is where he got it from, Beaver Soil and Mould. Uh, obviously on uh, eBay. Okay. Now I rung these up, and the good thing about these was years ago, uh, garden centres and quite a few people used to do quite a bit of stuff by the ton, and now they've stopped doing it. But these lot, if you can see from top left, you can get a ton of multi-purpose compost, you can get fruit and veggie compost, gold blender, peat free, lawn uh, start, Multi-purpose compost again, bottom. Organic rotted horse manure, spent mushroom compost, tree and edge plantings. Meaning they do loads of good brews. Now if you run a allotment site or trading sheds, anything like that, this, this is a good buy. This is where I get everything. I'll get me worm cast rock dust and me spent mushroom compost by the ton. Meaning, well, that's the only way you're going to make money. Can you post uh, one of these bags to me? Sorry? Can you post one of each bags to me? Ten ton of each. Can you put them in the post? <laughs> you can suck egg. <laughs> Kill <again. laughs> I'll, I'll put some in the envelopes if you like it. <laughs> Those prices include delivery, Mick. I don't suppose. Yes. You know. Now, the yeah. thing is with these, when these, when you show me this, I look through them <laughs> now. <laughs> I've got to work that out with a multi-purpose compost. So obviously, if I get that loose, I've got to pack it up. I'm still going to look into it. Uh, I rung the chap up, and it was Dan Beaver. Now, I've got his mobile number, and he says, if anybody, well, if you're on trading sheds, or even if there's just two or three of you on the allotment side, and want to split a bag, then get it that way. But uh, he says, if you ring him up, but it's going to be through his mobile. But he says, don't give his mobile out. Just, he says, if anybody's interested, he's giving it me, and you've got to message me, and I'll pass it here. But all you've got to say, then say to him, you've had this talk from the Compost King, and that is the clue then for him to give you another discount. And he'll give you a discount on it on top of that. So, but, but that's Dan himself, because his mobile number's not on any of the um, info. His uh, website or anything like that. So if anybody is interested, just give us a a message, and I'll give you his mobile number, and you can get another discount. Luckily this afternoon, uh, this is Jennifer from Reaming Volcanic Rock Dust. That's from uh, Aberdeen. I've been in quite a few talks on different shows, and Jennifer has been there, and we've been involved. We're getting kids together, getting them involved in gardening, whatever. Okay. Well, I runs Reaming, and uh, she has mentioned that if I want a, a free bag of, uh, which is a 10 kilo bag, posted out to one of my winners, so this will be a prize for next week. That'll be one of the prizes. Whoever wins that, cool. they got 10k free postage. Cool. cool. That sounds good. good stuff. But, uh, 
Yeah. It's worth having a perv. Just have a nose on the on the website. The we mentioned there because I flog the stuff. Meaning there's quite a few nurses that sell this book. Uh, you got to pay for postage as well. But obviously I, I sell it where you got to pick it up. It so is good stuff. I Sorry? use it. It's nice it is good stuff. Nick Lowe and Mary. Brilliant stuff. Love it. Anybody what buys Bathgate Champions Blend Compost, it's got Remin Rock was included in it. Yeah. Bathgate. Good shit. Bathgate, yeah. <laughs> That's, um... And there's me right up on behalf of the Alamut side footer. But uh, to, if I get it by the ton, then it, 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 it's selling. Otherwise, I wouldn't get it. And this was three days ago at the back garden. The first rows showing signs. No, look at that. Right, select seeds. I had a quick purr through these because they're getting some uh, new stuff out. I thought, I'll have another nose. And uh, this was a, a new one, 2021, Purple Rain. I thought, I'll give that a go. I'm, I'm getting more into my greens now. So I've sent for a packet of them. I've got another new um, sweet corn out, so I've sent for a packet of them and all. Give them a try for this year. Uh, Marathon, which is a good old favourite. Now this was Tesco, I saw these, baby spinach. This was uh, about six days ago. I thought I'd give them a go, because I remember spinach at school, it was vile. Tasty. Yeah. <laughs> And I even tried for myself about 20 years ago, and uh, the kids are good now anyway, and I, I sod that off. But I thought, baby spinach, I'm going to give that a go. And I, I, I had these, had this, and it's only like bringing it to the boil and then simmering it for five minutes. And the taste is superb. Mm. Before, before mm. I even put a dollop of gravy on, I ate half the spinach just on its own. That's how good it was. It was mm. superb. And the good thing about it, I went to Lidl this morning, and I'm bloody flogging it. So I'm after seed now for that baby spinach. Beautiful. Mm. 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 Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> right, this was two days ago, dry as a bowl. With the winds, dried all the grass. So I cut it. So there's ready for me composting tomorrow. I've got my extra ingredient. Another nitrogen, cut grass. Yeah. Mm. Wilco has still got loads of stuff in. I'm still bringing out loads. They've got taters, onion sets, shallots. Yeah. People are still s telling some people on groups it's too late to put um, onion sets and shallots in. What a load. Ah. So, this, um, even taters, it's still time to put taters in. If you don't want to bung them out, because we might be getting frost again, as I mentioned earlier on, just bung them in a small pot, keep the shoots on. Yeah. I use clover, that's all I'm getting now. I ain't going to look after a muck about with them uh, M3 and F2S. No, I'm just having clover. Clover's a good one. If they don't like it, they can lump it. In fact, somebody come to the shed Saturday, uh, yesterday, and he says, uh, where's my M3? I says, you ain't going to get it. It's either clover or lump it. And he, he ended up taking clover. Sod him. Right, I'm going to rub my lumps okay. out. Whatever compost you're going to get, it's going to be compact. So rub the lumps out, help them out. Good brew. Then I put my vermiculite in. As you know, I love it. Put your compost in the bottom, about halfway up the pot, bung your tater in, cover it with compost, put your label in. Mick. Cold in the greenhouse. Yes. Your vermiculite, you buy it in 100 litre bags? Like, uh, yes. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah, 10 bags at a time. And what they sort of price you're getting that at? Uh, I think it was 26 the last time. Oh, okay, about the same. Yeah. Well, you, you got to buy bulk. But, it, but it's Boston stuff. That's a good seller as well. We, yeah. we um, dish it out, three litre bags. Just right, a quick, where was this? I'll, I'll, Mick, just before you carry on, I've put the link on for the glyphosate into the chat, so if anybody wants to click it. Good man. That's a, that, that job that at the end, anyway, brother. Yeah. Right, this was up, uh, where the hell was this? All right. This was at Home Bargains uh, yesterday. We legged it in there and I was, was flogging these off 99 pence each. So I got me two bags and uh, these two will be going, uh, getting planted tomorrow or the day after. But that'll be covered next week. Well, there's plenty of time to put them in, isn't there? Yeah, of course there is. Bloody yeah. hell. Yeah. yeah, loads of time. Yeah. Uh, is, is, I've got another one after that. 
So then, let's just go back on that one. It's carrots. So the sets on the left there, then we're eating greenhouse and then taken out. And the ones on the right are in a cold greenhouse. So mm -hmm. even with them sharp frost we've had, they will still come through. And the one on the right, heated greenhouse carrots. One on the left, cold greenhouse. Mm -hmm. They will come through. Flourish buckets or 7.5 litre bucket. And this was, uh, had this yesterday, National Cancer Society, because we were at Garden Club, is affiliated to a uh, National Chrysanth, uh, Dahlia, Gladioli, and National Veg Society. Well, for the last time this year. Well, be next year. But we still get the, the, the books out. So that was from, so that's from yesterday. So speakers for next year, of the uh, Nigel, obviously muddy boots. Also got Joanne from Manchester and seaweed. Mmm, seaweed. All you Midlanders should be going. Mm. Mm. Nigel on Gladiolite, Nigel from Derby. Uh, Jeffrey with his spuds from Ostend, plus others. Uh, leaf mold I'll cover next week and all. It's all this for next week. Not what I've just said yet. Oh, excellent. Plus, uh, other people are sending me um, extra bits of droppings. We need the extra half hour, mate. I know. It's <laughs> closing now. Mick, my well, brother... Said... Mick. Yes? My brother runs a farming supermarket up and down the country. He's the big boss man. Oh. And he rang me. He rang me yesterday and said, they're selling a hell of a lot of policy. Now that indicates that there is going to be a frost. Oh, uh, yeah. Because it's just the farmers that's ordering it. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's, that's our weather, ain't it? It's all to pot any row. Yeah. Pot look. Donna, evening all. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yo, lot. Lovely. Thank you. Very interesting. And, uh, we'll see you next yeah. week. Yeah. If you want to hang on for a, a, another natter, if you're going to get that bus home or another natter. Yeah. A bus. Cheers. If anybody wants to give us a write up next week, a couple of photos, you've only got to put six photos in what you're doing or whatever. It's just, uh, it's just uh, if you have got it, flaunt it. Mick. Yes. You posted me Friday, that's me. Good suck egg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm posting it to you. Thanks ever so much, Mick. It's been brilliant. Yeah, Good thanks, Mick. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much, Cheers, Cheers, people. Cheers, Cheers Mick. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Thank 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 you.